So I'm going to ask you this question just to get started. This is not a human skull. Why does it not look like a human skull? Well, that ridge across the top of the skull, for one thing. Okay, that's a good, very good uh, point. Also, to scale, this is going to be a very large skull, a lot bigger than a human skull. Ridge across the top, we definitely don't have that. And the, the teeth. teeth. The teeth. The teeth, it looks like you've got two sort of these two. We do have these two front teeth, but we definitely don't have those uh, pointed teeth. And what's curious about these teeth, um, if you talk to somebody who studies the uh, relationships between mm -hmm. animals, they call it comparative zoology. Um, if you throw in humans, I'm not sure what you call it, but um, basically you're looking at uh, the structure of different animals to try and identify what they are. And most animals, if you can just find their teeth, you can tell what the animal eats. And if you can tell what it eats, you can probably figure out, we're back to Sherlock Holmes here, um, you can probably figure out a lot of other things about that animal's behavior. You might figure out when it sleeps, uh, how many legs it has, how does it move, where does it live, um, you know, in a tree or on the ground, all these kind of things, just based on teeth alone. Um, this particular animal has these big, uh, teeth in the front, which are usually for kind of for cutting. Um, when we look at the human skull, you're going to see the same teeth. You've got a couple in the front and then a couple uh, a little bit lower. But humans don't have these two, uh, these sort of overlapping, they look like fangs or I don't know, almost like a, a cat's a jaw. This is actually the skull of, uh, who can guess it or if you can read the small print? The gorilla, yeah. yeah correct. Um, it seems longer too. This, I don't know, but it, it seems a longer okay. skull. Absolutely you? right. And if you look at the distance between the edge of the eye mm -hmm. and the side of the skull, when we look at the human, you're going to notice there's quite a bit more uh, distance before you get to the side of the head. Okay. Because compared to this large vision area, because the eyes are for vision, um, the, the part that holds the brain is much smaller mm -hmm. in comparison. <laughs> to a human skull. We're going to get to human skull. Um, also, if you look the distance, you're going to notice between the, the bottom of the nose and the teeth is also quite a bit of a distance. Um, and this part, which you call the, well, there's some different words for it, but um, uh, this sort of orbital area, the area around the eye and this bone, I guess we call it a cheekbone, is going to be much lower. So let's take a look at what this animal looks like. There we go. There's our, so you can see a lot of that area on the top is hiding that crest on the top of the head, the, the crest we mentioned right here. Um, and you can see there's a fair amount of distance between the bottom of the nose and where the teeth are. All those big teeth are very carefully hidden, hidden in the gorilla. Um, and you're seeing with all this hair, you're seeing quite a bit of, uh, of space here. Um, so not human. We're going to go now. The one on the left is a human. Um, and the one eyes. So you can see the Neanderthal has a much bigger uh, eye socket this bone, especially next to the eye where the human, humans have a very gentle bone right here. It's very gentle. It just curves over. You can see this uh, Neanderthal has this very sort of very heavy ridge right here. Um, it looks like the skull, the brain, it looks like maybe there's more room, but what the scientists are suggesting who study these brains, um, they're suggesting that the Neanderthal has a lot more of its brain um, designated for use for vision and for movement and less brain designated for uh, Mozart and looking at art and uh, what we call cognitive thinking and a lot of other things that the brain does. So you've got a much higher, the human skull has got less for vision and movement. And you can see the eye is fairly small compared to the rest of the head um, in the human. That's a, us over on the left. Also, you can see if you, I don't know if you can see my cursor, I could try again to, to draw. See, here's the eye and this ear is probably over, I think the ear is right around, right around here. I think this is where the, the bone is where the ear comes in. 
Um, anyway, having do that, let's get past uh, Neanderthal and we'll get to, uh, we'll go for human. Um, this is a typical subject uh, for painting. This is uh, Homo sapien, George Clooney, who's very popular in Italy and lives in Lagori, um, one, one of the, Lake Como, one of the Italian lakes here. But he probably has a very classic skull. Well, this is a piece by M.C. Escher, but I thought it was a good first image to start with because in addition to uh, understanding sight, the eye can also um, be some kind of a window. Some people say it's a window into the soul, it's a window into the interior of, uh, of a person. The eye is the only part of the body that's wet. Unless you're coming out of a swimming pool, an eye has liquid on it and it reflects differently than other surfaces. Um, so that's something else to think about that it's wet. The other thing that it does is because an eye, as we know, is like a ball, it's round. Um, the eye also reflects whatever you're looking at. So for example, if you look at this, um, at the, let me see if I can annotate this here, I'll draw right. They're trying to, if you look at this spot in the middle of these eyes, right here and right here, they're almost square. Now, why are they square? And I'll show you a few more pictures and you'll see, it's because there's probably a square window that's being reflected. There's probably a square window in the room. Every time you paint an eye, you should consider what's in the room. Now, as you look at all these different self-portraits, you're gonna see a lot of times it's completely ignored. Um, <coughs> you'll especially notice though with photography, which is much easier, um, you can tell if there's four windows in a room, you're going to see all four windows in each eye. Um, if it's a very soft light, you're going to see that soft light. That's why sometimes people look so beautiful when they're out in nature, because you have this reflected, uh, gentle sunlight um, that, uh, that's going to fill the eye with light. Um, I did want to mention you don't have to be realistic. I'm not, I'm pushing everyone to try and work and find their own look and their own style. Um, not everybody's going to want to paint, uh, you know, in a Renaissance style with all these details or like a cartoon. This is perhaps one of the most famous self-portraits ever done. It was done by Pablo Picasso later in his life. And you can see the pupils are totally different. He's got a big pupil. He's got a little pupil. Um, he's got some uh, color, he's got some scratchy lines, he's got a lot going on in this, but I think it, it's, a, it's a very strong image because I think when you look at it, you really connect with it. You, you feel whatever this guy feels. Um, I don't know if anyone wants to take a stab at what this guy feels. Um, I've uh, never seen this. Uh, I haven't either. It's, it's one of his last self-portraits. I think it's one of his last paintings he did. Um, but it has a very complex emotion. It has a lot of uh, creativity in how it's painted. Um, but also, it, to me, it has a certain kind of uh, you know, anxiety about asking those questions I mentioned last time when we talked about Blade Runner, uh, the Harrison Ford movie, asking the question, who are we? Where do we come from? And you know, how long have we got? Questions like that. Um, this is an image from Japanese anime um, uh, or manga. They've, they've developed all these cartoon styles over the last 40, 50 years in Japan, and they do a lot with eyes. And I'm putting my darkest black, and I'm going for the really, what I feel is the more specific shape of the head right here. And then something dark, I'm going to very specific shape also right here over my shoulder. See, I've done that sharp line, but then this, I'm just going to try and fill in. But when I say fill in, I don't mean to, uh, to be generic about it, but just for the sake of 
of this being a sketch, I want to try and get that exact shape again of the, of the hat. Um, I think I can do the same thing right here. In this case, I think it's really black next to black, but I want to, I leave a little white. I don't know if you can see this kind of a white uh, edge. I do that in my work because it creates a, um, uh, it makes everything feel like it's glowing a little bit. Once again, I know I can't draw this well, straight up and down, so I'm gonna go for sort of an angle just to get that edge the way I want it. Uh, we'd like to say something about the, these. Um, just, you know, it's me, my dog and my partner. <laughs> We were, and literally we were like watching the impeachment trial and I just sat there drawing and, um, um I, and I'm trying to remember to just have that sketchbook around because, you know, at any, you can do it while you're doing anything. Um, uh, it, it's sort of like when you, they say when you, when you're practicing an instrument, do it while you're watching TV. But you find there's all kinds of things going on under the nose. There's a lot of artists that made that even the most important part of the picture. Mm. Botticelli, if you look at all the Botticellis, he's very, very precise about this shape. And it's very different on different kinds of uh, heads. This one's great. I don't know if you want to say something about this portrait. No, I, I, I don't know really what to say, except that I'm happier with it than the ones I did before. <laughs> And you do that with very few lines, like, I like say that. And, and I noticed that with the first ones that you did as well, you, you, yeah. you know, there's not a lot of detail, but they're definitely your shape of the eyes, your shape of the yeah. mouth. It's, it's, um, it's definitely you. Whenever I paint, and I did that with the, even the portrait today, I didn't mention this, but when I paint the front of somebody's head, I'm also painting the back of their head. Mm -hmm. I'm also painting their feet. I'm very aware of where the rest of the body is. I think that, uh, this is Natalie's um, portrait, if you'd like to say something. Wow. Um, so that's not a self-portrait. It's a portrait of my daughter. I love what you said about the stairs because she's in her second year at college. She's at UCLA. She's busy figuring out what she's going to do with her life, but she was home for Christmas when I took this picture. And that's exactly how I see her. She's, she's going places. And we don't really know where. A part of me wants to keep her here, and part of me wants to send her, you know, flying into the world. And yeah. Um, I see first the eyes. Mm -hmm. And of course, one of the things about doing self portraits is I, for me, I see the memory. So maybe that's the narrative that you were referring to. But, um, so I see first the eyes and the feeling that it evokes in me that I have to see if I can convey. Um, and then I go down the road. I absolutely do that. That's, that's an important part of it to me. It's the beginning of this journey. So. I definitely have the feeling like you're about to turn around and start walking down the road. Like you're yes. just, that, it's that moment right before you turn to walk and. Um, yeah. Really tells it. and also this nice repetition of pattern and shape. wants you to draw 10,000 noses. Now, I know you're not going to really draw 10,000 noses, probably not that much room in a sketchbook. Here's a picture. Michelangelo drew a couple of noses. I want you to draw 10,000 eyes. I want you to draw 10,000 ears. I want you to draw 10,000 mouths and 10,000 chins. Now, I don't expect you to actually draw that many, but if you draw 20, that would be great. Uh, if you draw five, that's better than zero. But if you really want to know a nose, you really got to just draw a lot of noses. If you get enough confidence with your eyes, noses, mouths, et cetera, 
you're, when you draw yourself portrait, you're not going to be feeling like you're struggling or feeling like, you know, is the eye too far away or any of these kind of things. You're just going to be like, I know what I'm doing. Here's a nose, here's a mouth, here's an eye. Um, some things that might inspire other people to be glad they woke up in the morning, uh, inspire people to, uh, in a lot of ways, I think every painting that Leonardo da Vinci did is a painting about saving the world. Because when I see all of those paintings, at least for me personally, I think, wow, I'm glad I you know, was born. I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad I can look at this painting. It really you know, lifts me up. Um, and I don't even care what the subject is. It's just so well done. Um, I don't know how many people today think, oh, I just want to, I want to be a ballerina. It sounds like a lot of work to most people. Um, uh, and you don't get to eat very much. Or do I want to be an astronaut? Well, nowadays, if you're an astronaut, they're going to send you to Mars, but they don't know how to bring you back. When you go to, uh, when you order an airline ticket online, at least in Italy, it's called andato e ritorno. You go there and you come back. Um, and usually you want to buy a round trip ticket because you love your home and your family and everyone you're with and you don't want to just go there. So if you want to be an astronaut today, you're going to get stuck. Um, you knew I was going to talk about Mars eventually. Um, <laughs> you're going to go to Mars and you're not going to make it home. But you could do a self-portrait about, um, uh, about this idea of where you could be or where you could go because you can make a trip to Mars you know, in front of your mirror. You don't have to go on, uh, you know, buy a ticket or anything. Um, and you don't have to go there and back. And you can make, that can be a compelling story. Uh, you know, there you are on the moon. Um, if, if I were giving homework assignments like Walter Bartman does, I'd probably have, you have to make a self-portrait on Mars.